how to communicate bad news. This is one of the questions that I receive very frequently from my clients who are female managers these days. And, you know, unfortunately, um, we are living through very difficult times. And if you're a manager yourself, the chances are that at some stage you will have to communicate some sort of bad news to your team, to your management. Um, bad news such as layoffs, salary decreases, organizational changes, or anything, any news or any decision uh, that has got profoundly negative implications for your employees uh, and they will find it very unsettling. So how do we go about communicating bad news? If you're seeing me for the first time, hi, my name is Alena Huberova and I help women to become the managers they always wish they had. And today, I have here with me someone very special, someone who is actually very qualified to talk to us on this subject and to provide us with tips and techniques on delivering bad news, which I believe that for us women is especially challenging. So let me tell you a few words about him. My guest here is Pavel Novak, and Pavel is a trainer, consultant, mentor, and mediator. And he's got 15 years of international training and consulting experience. And his expertise is in the area of uh, negotiation. Uh, Pavel has been training uh, all over Europe in major companies such as HSBC, UCB, Volvo, PwC, Amadeus, um, Accenture, and many other companies. So that's about Pavel. If you want to know more about Pavel, I will actually include a link to his website uh, down below the video. Uh, you can check that for yourself. But now, without further ado, I really want to dive into that subject. So Pavel, hello to you. Now your face has disappeared, but Hopefully, I'll get back to you. Um, it's lovely to have you here. And um, hello, I everyone. Wonder, My pleasure. Yes, hi. Um, I just wonder how do we start this, Pavel? Uh, I, I guess it's before we get to some tips on how we co communicate, how we deliver the bad news. What about uh, telling our audience, how do we actually prepare for such a complicated conversation? What do you think, Pavel? Excellent question, Alena, because this is the first thing that uh, many managers struggle, struggle with. Uh, and as you've been introducing me, I've, I've delivered uh, trainings to more than 10,000 people. I, I was counting recently and I got to that number. And uh, whenever there was the topic of announcing difficult decisions, the preparation is really the key. So you, you started with the most important topic uh, approach. And the truth is many managers uh, struggle with this, uh, not only uh, female managers, but male managers as well. Um, because when you announce something which is not popular, such as restrictions or laying people off or, you know, no budget uh, for uh, development or no salary increase. It's always a big test of, of you as a manager uh, and of, of you accepting responsibility. So preparation is key. Three things I would recommend. Uh, one, uh, we very often um, rely on preparing the message, what I will say, but we don't prepare uh, what will happen after we announce the news. And it's really important to understand that people don't do what we tell them, you know, for, for every parent, this is obvious. If you tell your kids to clean their room, they won't do it. Uh, people change only if the consequences of their actions change. So this is the first uh, obstacle I see. Managers prepare the message, by the, but they don't prepare what will happen afterwards. Hmm. 
So this is the first area to focus on. So mm -hmm. what does this really mean? What will the new reality look like? Yes. So once we deliver the news, uh, what are the potential reactions that we will be receiving, right? We need to be ready for them. Exactly. Reactions and more. Uh, it's actually how do we make it feasible? Who will be responsible for what? What's the time scale? What sort of support people will get? Uh, what will change and what will not change? And that typically is something that is, is missing, uh, partly because as we go through any turbulence and the, the last few weeks or months have been a good example of this, everybody has been living uh, through these changes uh, throughout Europe. Uh, we know that it's hard to foresee. So we have announcements, but we don't really necessarily are good at explaining what it will mean and what are the uh, exceptions and what doesn't change. So this, of course, requires a careful preparation mm -hmm. uh, before we stand up in front of people and announce. Because if we stand there unprepared, uh, it might turn into a very nasty exercise and a big battle, uh, whether the manager will keep the face or lose the face in front of the team. And of course, that, that is hard to recover uh, such a damage. Yeah. Uh, I would say that we probably do the same for any kind of presentation, right? Because it's not only the content of the actual presentation, but I always tell my clients, prepare a list of all the possible reactions, all the possible um, objections that the people may have, and just think through the answers, right? So it's, it's more or less what you're saying, right? It's absolutely true, Elena. Uh, my experience is that we are all stretched for time. So yeah. preparation time is always uh, a, a big fight. Uh, yeah. But if the manager takes the time to create all the, all the possible reactions, uh, they will be able to think of their answers as, as you suggested. Mm, yeah, okay. Maybe for a new manager or somebody who has never been in that situation, you know, I encounter repeatedly that laying somebody off is one of the most difficult exercise um, being a manager. Uh, it, it also helps to know something about human reaction to changes and also our um, reaction to discovering something new. So there are these famous curves, uh, change curve, uh, when uh, you suffer the change and the change curve when you are on the discovery of something. Mm -hmm. And once you understand that, it's actually much easier to model in your preparation time the reactions people will have. Yeah, absolutely. And also, um, we need to have the individuals in mind, right? Because some people react to changes uh, more intensely to than other people, right? Some people, when a change comes, they don't know how to deal with it. They feel paralyzed. Um, some people, they want to fight the change. They want to resist it somehow, right? So we also need to have the individual personality in, in mind, no? Totally true. Uh, just think back when, you know, in, in the Czech Republic, but mostly around Europe, we, we are wearing the face masks. Mm. And if you think back about the first thought when, when uh, this idea was presented uh, by, the, by the local authorities, the first time you saw somebody wearing a mask, were you among the first people to adopt the new countermeasure or were you waiting and thinking, you know, this is ridiculous, doesn't look good, it doesn't work anyway. Um, so you can also learn from observing your own reaction about the natural steps. Yeah. Um, if you are working with a team that you know very well, you have a good idea of who, who, is, who likes changes and who really does not like changes much. So that definitely helps having that personal, uh, personal um, history of the person. Um, on the other hand, you know, if the change is massive, um, everybody reacts differently. So it might be uh, several things at once, 
people might have some difficulties at home and they might surprise you with their reactions. So uh, just be ready for anything uh, would be my advice. Okay, good. All right, so preparation. Preparation is absolutely key. Anticipate what kind of reactions people may have. Uh, anticipate the type of questions they may be asking, the type of objections that they may, may be throwing at you. Preparation is absolutely key. The next thing then, Pavel, how is it we actually communicate? How is it we deliver the news? Do we start on the positive note? Do we dive right into the negative? What would your advice be? Well, one thing that is very important, Elena, uh, I would not necessarily think about uh, the change as something negative. Um, I would recommend seeing it as neutral and presenting it as factual as possible. So, um, you know, if you, um, if you imagine there is a new product and you have been reading some reviews and the first reviews were negative, it will actually stick to your mind and it will be very hard to convince you that the product is really good. So the first message really counts. So my uh, suggestion number one would be don't wait too long and make sure you one of the first announcers of the news. Very often there is great wine in the, in the company and there are gossips and people talk. And uh, so don't hesitate and wait too long. That would be my, my recommendation because I've seen people struggling uh, so much that they waited more than was uh, healthy or helpful. And then the whole situation is tougher. Um, when it comes to announcing, uh, you actually do, um, you need to go straight to the point after, uh, after you connect to the people on the, on, the, on the human level. So we say if you're, if, if you're at training, it's a yes to the person. Such as, you know, I've been, we've been together for, for so long and, you know, the situation has been uh, such and such recently and we've carefully thought about uh, the countermeasures and here is the decision we, we've, we've come to and we want to announce today. So not bad news, but uh, a decision to be announced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So don't frame it as bad news. Don't frame it negatively because you will make it harder for people to accept it. Mm -hmm. You know, in the Czech Republic, I don't know, elsewhere in Europe, but typically in the Czech Republic, people come and say, managers come and say, you know, I've got good news and bad news. Um, <laughs> I don't advise using that attitude, attitude or that approach because you are priming the person that the message will be bad. Yes. And, you know, Honestly, uh, every change brings new opportunities and maybe uh, looking backwards, we are grateful that some big changes happened, although we didn't, we didn't like them at the point when they were happening. Mm. So don't frame it negatively, frame mm. it neutrally. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you say connect on a human level, like that rapport, uh, and then go directly into it. Um, announce the decision, go straight yes. to the point. And then what? Would you invite them to have questions? What, what would be the next step? Surprisingly, and, and again, this is based on people's reaction, surprisingly managers rush through this exercise or through this unpleasant experience, they think, for them. So uh, they try to give all the reasons and, and then maybe ask questions. I suggest you pause after announcing the news to let the message sink because really it takes a little while for the audience to get the message you just said. So somewhere in their head, it's like, wait a minute, did he just say, did she just say that we're yeah. gonna, so 20% of people will be laid off? Wow. And that internal monologue goes on and I wasn't counting, but there was, there was a good four or five seconds. So if you leave a little bit of pause, 
after the announcement, you are actually saving yourself a lot of uh, struggle and hard work later when people will come with objections. Mm. After the silence, Alena, um, it's, it's about giving reasons, uh, reason or reasons for the change, explaining why. And I've seen, I've seen this uh, more and more important with uh, you, you know, the generation Y and generation Z. Uh, the meaning, the purpose of changes is really important to explain. Yeah. Would you be able to give us a specific example of such why? So we decided to do this because... We decided to do this Pause. And let me explain the, the main reason, the, the main three reasons why we decided for this decision. Mm -hmm. Right? Number one, it's the situation right now and this is the moment to react. Number two, it's in line with our strategy of this and that. Uh, and number three, uh, it's also enabling us to implement this and that. So three is maximum. And if you have one strong reason, give just one. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have to be a long list. You know, you don't have to say, and you know, there are 10 things why, which make it uh, really a, a good one. Uh, yeah. Because people will listen to the weakest uh, argument you will have anyways. So just start with the powerful ones and don't give too many. Yeah, because otherwise it sounds as a long justification and yeah, people smell negative intentions behind, right? And exactly. And they smell, they sense that the manager is not the, the manager is not um, certain or does not take responsibility so that it does start to sound like justification or a selling pitch. Right. Yeah. Which, which is not what you're doing. You're, you're announcing and giving reasons and you want the other person to understand the reasons and the context so that they can uh, accept the new reality. Right. Okay. After we have given one to three reasons, what then? We wait for the reaction. Do we invite? Do we actually proactively invite them to ask questions? Or again, we pause and we wait? Yes, um, you know, it depends on whether you are an experienced manager or not, how you manage reactions of people or not. Um, for some managers, I would not, you can invite, but I wouldn't recommend asking, what do you think about it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you are asking for evaluation. Mm -hmm. uh, so typically people will react if you pause uh, if they don't you can ask them so how do you how do you feel about this or mm -hmm. how do you how do you understand um, um, but how do you feel is actually invitation an invitation to help people uh, express the initial thoughts which typically aren't very <laughs> positive or very pleasant. Mm -hmm. So by, by inviting, we are showing that we have the courage and it's always better to hear it from the people directly than to kind of suppress it and let them leave the room with it. Okay. So uh, something absolutely not to do is to ask, what do you think about it? but rather we invite them by saying, how do you feel about it? Yes, yes. Okay. And then we just wait for the reactions to come and we handle them appropriately, yeah. Exactly, we need to acknowledge them because they are real. The person is in real emotions, in shock, in anger, in denial. Uh, if we don't, acknowledge them and, and handle them, they will stay longer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Acknowledging objections. Yes. And then providing again reasons 
um, or more information in order to uh, give the person essentially what they need at that particular moment, right? Um, right. Yeah. And <laughs> it's actually very often, surprisingly, if people don't need more information. They need uh, acknowledgement. They need to be heard and to be understood. At the beginning, it's not very much about giving them too much information. Mm -hmm. Because if you do that, uh, if you start logical reasoning, you are actually feeding uh, the, the, the um, denial and the anger, and it, it turns into a, a logical debate, mm -hmm. which, which can be a very long one. And actually, people can leave thinking, you know, I don't agree with the reasons, or the, his, his reasoning is, is not logical, doesn't make sense, and they can stay in the denial. So typically after you announce, it's not about giving more reasons or more information. It's about, okay, I see this is hard to uh, acknowledge, or this is, this is a big change, and I can see that uh, um, you are in a, in, in, in a, in a shock or, or you're fighting it internally. Yes. So it's connecting to the, on the human level again. Yes. So just to show our understanding for how the person is feeling, acknowledging that. Um, Pavel, what if that change we are communicating or that news we are communicating has such a profound um, negative impact on the person? You know, maybe they're going to lose their job and their immediate reaction is, uh, or they are, we are asking them to accept a salary increase and their immediate reaction is no. I'm absolutely not accepting this. I'm sorry. What, what do we do? Uh, um, it's um, a typical reaction, Elena, because it's the first reaction. It's no, you know, this is not happening. You know, if you, we think about COVID-19, it's not coming to Europe. It's somewhere in China. It's not about us, right? It won't impact us. So we all have been in this first stage. Um, we need to em emphasize, uh, sorry, to show empathy <laughs> and uh, say, okay, so I see it's hard for you to uh, accept this as a reality. It's, it's, you're struggling with accepting this. Um, right? Is that so? Mm -hmm. And I wait. Uh -huh. And sometimes I may suggest repeating a uh, decision or the reasons. Um, very often it's not that they didn't understand, it's just that it's so painful that it's hard for them to uh, accept it. So that's why I recommend the pauses. They work for you uh, in helping the other person acknowledge the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm, my, the job I used to have uh, I will no longer have. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the sooner, the sooner the person accepts uh, the new reality, the, the, the faster they will find a new job or start building, uh, you know, taking steps to recovery. Um, but the essential thing, and that's the most difficult one, is actually to, to, to let all the hopes kind of die in the moment. Sorry for the language. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay, fine. So let's just recap this um, delivering the news. So you said that we start with a rapport. It's, it's, we need to say yes to the person and acknowledge them. Um, then we go straight to the, new, to, to the news, uh, straight to the point, um, announcing the decision that we made. Yes. And take a pause. Yeah, we make a pause to make sure that it sinks in. And then we provide reasons. If we have a strong reason, it can be just one reason. If we have few reasons, uh, a maximum three is something that we could state. Absolutely. And uh, then again, we pause and we wait for the reaction. And we acknowledge the emotional reaction because typically now the emotions will come. Mm -hmm. With some people, you will get the emotions all over the place immediately. With other people, they will react. Uh, they will react, you know, reasonably, or they will stay inside. 
but you can be sure that if the decision is a profound one and has big consequences, the emotional reaction is there. Mm. And yeah. it's typically a mixture of uh, anger, sadness, nostalgia, despair. You know, people can burst into tears. So that's why actually not rushing through um, is helping the person recover faster hmm. or adapting to new reality faster. Yes. And in here, our role is to really uh, hear them and to acknowledge how they feel, to maybe even help them to express how they feel, right? Exactly, exactly. So how do we conclude such a communication? We, uh, there, there are two more steps, and I'm fully aware, Elena, that I'm being kind of very prescriptive in one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have to be that, you know, that step by step. And, and as I've been working with various cultures, uh, certain cultures uh, need to give a bigger context at the beginning, and then they announce. Uh, other cultures go straight to the point because they cut cut to the chase. Uh, this is typically the American expression. So depending on the culture, uh, you will need to do certain things before and after. But there are two things actually you need to do before you finish the meeting. Mm -hmm. First is get a yes to the commitment to commitment to actually seeing it through to the to accepting the reality and working with you on the new reality. How would we do that? Would you give me a concrete example? Um, it's called yes to commitment, and uh, typically the question could be, you know, if if I'm if I'm announcing that your uh, contract or your job position has ended with this company, um, I I might be asking for a commitment that we hand everything over and that we that the 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 contract is ending, but our mutual respect or mutual re uh, relationship does not necessarily have to end. Mm -hmm. So um, can I count on you to, uh, to, to help us, uh, you know, go through this process, which, which will be, of course, challenging, but can, I, can we work on this together? Do we have an agreement? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is called yes to commitment. You're basically asking for some kind of a deal. Yes. For, for, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the very last step at least is, well, two steps really. Uh, the next steps, what will happen next? Mm -hmm. So having a clear plan of what will happen today, tomorrow, next week. And the final thing should be, again, acknowledgement and maybe even admiration for how the person is handling the news. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> provided that the reaction is acceptable, right? And, you know, it's, um, it's not pleasant to anyone, uh, but if they have been um, trying to restrain themselves from an emo emotional out outburst or if they, they have really been... Uh, helping you kind of plan the next steps. I think it's the moment to praise their uh, adult attitude, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're adults. We, do, we know that life is not always just pleasant and, and there will be difficult moments. Uh, so you can express your appreciation of, of, you know, the person being professional, even at this stage, for example. Yes. Um, Pavel, what if we don't get the yes to commitment? Would we continue the negotiation in that conversation or would we maybe want to see the person again? We, uh, I think the last, the least we can ask is to let, you know, to give the person time to think about it and, and ask them for a commitment to give it a thought um, and then coming back and, and, and taking maybe the next step and deciding uh, what to do. Okay. Um, so it could be like, can we agree that you will, you know, think about it, go through it, uh, maybe uh, reflect a bit and maybe let's meet tomorrow and, and decide what the next steps will be. Okay. 
Yes. Perfect. Good. So now we have um, a structure of how we could communicate the news. And uh, now, um, in your view, Pavel, what are the things that we absolutely have to avoid doing? Something that we often do, and it's definitely not advisable in this situation. Mm -hmm. I've, um, it's a um, good, <laughs> good question. Uh, I think we, we touched on some of the things. Um, over the years, I have seen several typical reactions. First one, uh, the manager is not really ready to announce. So they beat around the bush and they kind of give reasons and they start too wide so that they never actually get to the point. And if they get to the point, it's actually in the last third of the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So imagine I start like this. Uh, I, I want, I need to lay you off. And I start something like this, Alena. So I wanted to take the, the opportunity to review our cooperation, the things that works, the, the, have worked, the, the, the things you've done, the things that hasn't worked so well, or things you need to work on. That can actually turn into a very different discussion, and it will be very hard to recover or go back to the thing that you wanted to announce or share. Yes. Okay. So uh, beating around the bush, waiting with the announcement um, is a typical mistake for the, fir for the person who does it for the first time. Uh, I, say, I should say, you know, if you, if you plan um, 20 minutes to, for, for the meeting, the announcement should be uh, in the first five minutes or first seven minutes, let's say. And you have 30 minutes to handle the reaction because there will be reaction. Mm -hmm. If you wait till the end, the person will leave with a big emotional reaction and they will go somewhere and you don't know what they will do. Uh, they might be um, filing a lawsuit. They might be meeting their friends and deciding to fight the decision. Uh, they might do some damage. Um, you're basically giving up control of, of how they will accept it and, 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 and agreeing on, on some constructive next steps. So that's the typical uh, problem number one, waiting too long. Yeah. Second, what I see sometimes the manager, especially if it's a team leader really, or it's, if he's managing a small team and the relationships are very close, uh, it's really hard to accept, to take the responsibility. So the manager announces the news as if, the news does not come from him or her. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, Belgium decided or, you know, we have, you know, I've got something to tell you, uh, you know, the Washington came up with this or, you know, the guys in London uh, or. <laughs> um, so it's actually hiding from, you know, escaping your own responsibility and, and blaming somebody else or saying it's not me, it's somebody else. And it's actually creating a certain, uh, it, it's a, it comes at a certain cost. Mm. Because at that point, uh, your people will maybe like you, but they will no longer see you as manager. They will see you, A, as a postman, or B, as a team member. But definitely, they will see you as a weak manager. Mm -hmm. And this is what... Uh, managers who like to be liked, uh, you know, those people who like to be popular, you know, we have these engagement surveys and, and the managers who want their people to be uh, motivated, they typically struggle with this. How do I announce it? Uh, because I understand how my guys are feeling. And, you know, uh, you know the, the, the Sweden or, 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 or UK or, <laughs> or, or uh, Belgium, uh, they don't know how things go here and they don't have all the information, but you know, we have to do it anyway. This is a mistake. Mm -hmm. This is a difficult one, right? Because many of the decisions that are taken from the headquarters, uh, we are not aligned with, we don't believe in, uh, we are against, yet it is us managers who then have to pass it on to the employees. Um, so how would you phrase it? So say that you really disagree with that decision. 
and you absolutely hate having that responsibility to convey it to the employees, yet you have to. So how, how do you do that? We decided, how, how do you take that personal responsibility? Yeah, um, excellent question, Elena. This is what, what my um, participants of training often ask, you know, that, but there are some decisions which, which don't make uh, sense. Mm. Um, remember I said it's helpful to know uh, the change curves. Mm -hmm. What you have just described is the manager himself or herself going through a change curve and being in the denial stage. Um, I would say before you stand up in front of your people and announce something, you need to work your way through the change curve, through the preparation, asking other people, the, the people from headquarters, you know, what, what is the reason behind, I, you know, how do I sell this to my people? Because I don't see the reasons, mm -hmm. the reasoning you are giving me does not work here. I need something else. The manager needs to actually negotiate before he or she stands up in front of his team. Yeah, and essentially buy into that idea. And, and, and buy in and internally, yes. Yeah. It, it might not, uh, you will, you know, typically if it's a big change, it takes some time to get to the last uh, phase. But you at least need to be in the neutral stage where you see negatives, but you also see positives. Right. Mm -hmm. Because okay. once you see positives, it's easier to convince yourselves that there is actually a benefit in what we are about to do. And then you can stand up in front of people and, and, and speak up convincingly and say, look, uh, the decision uh, has been made. I, am, I see some benefits to it. And I want to, sh to announce the decision to, to you all or to us all because it will impact us and we need to get ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, the more often you can use the word I as a manager, the better. Uh, you can say we, you can say it. Uh, you should not really say they or them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and if you think about it, I have to announce it's actually uh, the manager struggling with accepting his or her responsibility. In reality, you choose to announce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You choose to accept the decision and deal with mm -hmm. it. Yeah. But it feels much heavier when you rephrase it in your own head. When you, if you say, I have to, it kind of keep, you keep yourself detached which provides a relief, but it doesn't really help your team. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so, you know, that's why it's tricky and that, that's why it typically requires a lot of practice uh, during the training sessions. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Well, this is an excellent advice because I often hear that it's so much easier to communicate something that someone else decided and not to take the responsibility for it. So yes, we have to do a lot of homework in order to assimilate the, assimilate the news and also negotiate with the management. I mean, does it really make sense? Give me the reasons. How do I sell it to the team? How do you convince me that this is the right way to go, right? Exactly. Yeah, or I, I'm not buying it. I need more yeah. reasons. I'm, my, if I stand up in front of my people, they will not buy it and it will, it will hit us back. Yeah. I need better reasons. I need to understand better. Um, it's, it's quite common, Elena, uh, and it takes some courage. Uh, and it's exactly the same story with standing in front of the people and telling them, look, this is the decision I am bringing you today. It will have impact. It has reasons why we do it today. So let's see what it is and let's see what it means and how we will manage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Both take uh, courage, uh, and if you are in the stage of not being convinced yet, don't stand up in front of your people. I've seen managers uh, deliver the message, and your nonverbal communication shows it all, mm -hmm. and and it has a bad impact on your respect. Uh, yeah. You know the respect you have among your team members because they think so. He clearly disagrees. And he's saying this, that so, so why doesn't he fight for us? Or why doesn't he give us a better reason? Yeah, yeah. Mm. 
Good, understood. I'm aware of time. So do we maybe have time for one other thing that we should absolutely avoid in these kind of conversations? The last thing I often see is uh, try, trying to sell the idea through questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So imagine my responsibility is to lay you off, Elena. And my attitude is, so Elena, what do you think? How will our, our company, you know, how will we manage with the team that we have right now and with the cut of 50% of our, of, of our turnover over the last two months? What, what do you think will, how do we manage? So I'm using questions to lead you to come to the conclusion that you should actually be fired. Wow. And I've seen that happen. You know, people use, uh, people give responsibility. You know, what would you, what do you suggest? What would you do uh, when the decision has already been taken? Uh -huh. So I don't recommend selling the idea or trying to coach the person to the point that they realize, oh yeah, I should be fired. Um, that's not going to happen. And if it is going to happen, people will perceive it as a sheer manipulation and they will hate you for that for that for long. Mm -hmm. That is to say, people will not like you for announcing the bad news anyway. But if you go straight to the point, uh, there is a much faster recovery phase and much faster you start actually uh, building. Mm -hmm. If it's beating around the bush through questions and um, not saying the message, but kind of uh, manipulating through, uh, you know, through coaching style, people will understand. And the next time you ask a question, they will know it's not really a question, but it's you trying to, to move them somewhere. So um, to put it in other words, there is a moment to give, this, give responsibility. It, it's when you empower and there is a moment to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. When you announce the news, don't give the responsibility to people to, to, to come to the conclusion. Take the responsibility, be the brave one to stand there and say, I am here to announce this. I've decided, uh, I've carefully studied the, de the, the decision and I support it. You know, that gives people certainty in the long run. Okay, great advice. To sum up, so the first, uh, uh, the first thing uh, for what not to do is don't wait. Uh, don't, don't beat around the bush. Get straight to the point. Get straight to the news. The second is uh, take responsibility. Don't convey the news as uh, a decision that someone else has taken. You first need to buy into that decision and be convinced that that is the right to, to go. So that means you need to negotiate with your own management uh, and Absolutely. ask all the questions and fight for the team, right? And, and with yourself too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and only then uh, you're ready to communicate that news. And then don't try to sell the idea in uh, using manipulation through asking questions and uh, leading the person to come to the conclusion themselves. That is pure manipulation and that will not be perceived very well. Uh, and that is not fair. Okay, absolutely. that absolutely. is... Sorry? Absolutely, Ellen. This is the perception people will have if, uh, you know, taking the last example. Yeah. Uh, very nicely summarized, yes. Yes, wonderful. Well, this has been uh, a lot of very interesting information. I wrote it all down so that I can then also uh, pass this message to my uh, female managers who, who need to go through this process and really be ready and train for that. Mm -hmm. so thank you so much, Pavel. Um, I definitely want to squeeze your brains on many other issues. Uh, but for now, we're going to conclude our session. Um, Pavel, if people want to find out more about you, uh, I already said they can go onto your website. Are you anywhere else? How can they reach you? 
there are you know two ways typically on well, my website uh, the link will be below but it's uh, pavel-novak.com and i'm on linkedin uh, so these would be the two primary um, places to go and and, and find more um, about me mm-hmm. and uh, thanks for having me um, i know the topic feels heavy uh, even as we as we discussed it, the kind of responsibility fell on on me, and I, I could see in your expression that oh, this is this is serious. Um, I want to conclude with this: the more uh, people get it at the point when you announce it, if they don't leave with smiles, that's okay because it means they understand things will be different from now on. Mm. So. Um, Thanks for having me. <laughs> and um, and um, the good news is uh, there will be room for questions later. You will be negotiating with your people anyway. You will be in- involving them afterwards and uh, compensating for what they have lost. So announcing the difficult news is not the end of the world. That there is usually some steps after where you can be warm and you can uh, show appreciation and show that you care. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's important to see it in the in the whole in in a longer perspective because change is a tough one. Yeah. But thanks for having me and uh, um, it, amazing the, the questions you have because these are exactly the questions people ask at the training and these are exactly the things people struggle with and that's where they need some practice. Yeah. Yeah. So it's great that we managed to tackle them and we gave people some food for thought and some concrete things and steps that they can go through in order to um, make this process more effective for themselves and uh, essentially more bearable for the listeners. Right. So thank you so much. And uh, I hope to see you very soon again. Thank you so much, Pavel. Thank you. And thanks for listening and uh, good luck. (laughs) Thank you.